Okay. Welcome, guys. Today we're going to be talking about expo. This whole chapter we're going to be talking about exponents and exponent rules, how to work with exponents, which is extremely important for the next chapter, which is polynomials, which is going to be extremely important for the chapter following that, which is quadratics, which is then going to be really important for the chapter following that, which is radicals. So I would strongly suggest that you take this seriously. It's very important. But the good news is very easy. First of all, I just want to talk to you about just, you know, the definition of an exponent and how it works and all that good stuff. When you have a value, whether it be a variable or a number raised to a certain power, the number that is, that is being raised to a power is this guy right here. That's called the base. That is the base of this, of this value. The exponent is the little number that is to its right. Okay, That's called the exponent or the power. And the exponent tells the reader how many times to multiply the base by itself. It doesn't say multiply the base times the exponent. No. It says how many times to multiply the base by itself. So if I have 2 cubed, that means I want to multiply 2 times itself 3 times. 2 times 2 times 2, very good. That equals 8, yes. Another thing about the exponents, which we have already talked about exponents. We've had this lesson. What does it affect? Okay. If I have 2 squared and I have negative 2 squared, the answer to 2 squared is 4, straight up. But the answer to negative 2 squared is negative 4. Why? Well, if you remember, the exponent affects the value immediately to its left. Now, to its left from the reader, from your perspective, you're watching this video right now, okay? This exponent, go to the left. The immediate value to the left, whether it be a number or a variable, that is what's getting affected. This negative 1 here is not get, getting affected. So how you really read this, this is a negative 1 times a 2 squared. So that's negative 4. The negative, again, is not being affected. So exponents affect the numbers directly to their left from the reader's perspective or everything that's inside of parentheses. So if I have this in this particular case, everything is affected. So it's negative 2 times negative 2, which is going to equal a 4. So that is one aspect that you really, really got to remember. Okay, Really got to remember that. I'm going to pause for a second and give you a visual cue for this. Give me one second. Okay, so hopefully you understood that, vi that visual cue. So now, let's get to the lesson in hand today. Today we're simply going to be talking about zero exponents and negative exponents. And they are absolutely important. It's the key to everything, okay? Anything raised to the zero power is one, period, unless it's zero. Zero raised to the zero power is undefined. There is no value for that. But everything else, any variable or number, anything that is affected by a zero exponent, listen to what I'm saying, anything that is affected by a zero exponent turns into 1. For example, 3 to the zero, yeah, the zero is affecting the 3, so that's going to equal 1. Negative 3 to the 0. What's getting affected? The negative or the 3? Just the 3. So that's going to be negative 1. In parentheses, negative 3 raised to the 0 power. What gets affected in this case? Both of them. Very good. Everything inside. So anything to the 0 power is 1. Does that make sense? Okay. Negative exponents. Negative exponents are very simple as well. 
When you have a negative exponent and it happens to be in the numerator, like this guy right here, I cannot work with negative exponents, okay? They're never going to ask you to simplify something with negative exponents, ever, okay? They're going to want positive exponents. So how do I go from a negative exponent to a positive exponent? I simply make it, bring it down to the denominator. How do I go from a negative exponent to the denominator? To, how do I make it positive? I bring it up to the numerator. So basically, if I go from the denominator to the numerator, or the numerator to the denominator, I change the sign of the exponent, not of the base. I do not change the value of the base. I do not change the sign of the base. I only change the sign of the exponent. For example, 3 to the negative 2 power. I want to make that positive, so I'm going to bring that first to the denominator. So that's 3 to the negative 2. Remember, when there's no denominator, there's an invisible 1 there. So I brought it down to the bottom. Now, 3 squared, that equals 9, so my answer is 1 ninth. Does that make sense? Okay. Negative 5 to the negative 2. What's getting affected there, the negative or the 5? Only the 5, right? So that negative is going to stay at the top, and the 5 to the negative 2 is going to be sent down to the bottom. Does that make sense? And then this is going to equal negative 1 over 25, of course, because 5 squared is 25. What is getting affected in this example here? Negative 2 in parentheses. Everything. Yes, very good. So this whole entire, the negative 2, will be brought down to the bottom, and it will be a positive square now, like that. Notice, did I change the sign of the base? No. You never change the sign of the base. If you go from numerator to denominator, or denominator to numerator, you change the sign of the exponent only, sir. The, ba the, the, the base here, in this particular case, this is in parentheses, is negative 2. Because everything is being affected. Because it's inside of parentheses. And then this is going to be, of course, 1 fourth. Because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Why is the negative 2 being affected? Because it's inside parentheses. Does that make sense? All right. Simplify each expression and, and express using only positive exponents. All right. This is Mickey Mouse time. I got a W to the negative 4, so what do I got to do with it? Got to bring it up. I've got an x to the negative 2. What do I got to do with that? Bring it down. And what does y to the 0 equal? So this is going to equal w to the fourth over x squared. For those of you that want to put a 1 here, do not. That 1 is implied. We know that. We know already, we've talked about this, that any variable or number in the universe is being multiplied by 1, divided by 1, and raised to the first power. We do not have to put 1s when we're talking about multiplication. If it was addition, then yes. B, what am I going to do here? Give me one second. OK, so let's continue now. What do I have here? Negative 4x to the 0. It would just be exactly negative 4. Done. Because x to the 0 is 1. Why did it all turn into 1? Because 0 is affecting only the x. Good job. Well done. Next. This bad boy, I've got y to the negative 3. i got to move that up. So what's it going to look like? Y to the third. Not x over 2, just x to the second power or x squared, sir. What happened to the w to the 0? 
If you add a zero, affects the W, so that becomes a one. Done. Next, what's this guy look like? What's this look like, sir? That becomes a one. Okay, you're gonna move these down, and you're gonna move this up. So that's gonna equal. 144 x to the fourth y squared excellent sir why would you put an addition sign when there's no addition signs if there's no addition sign guys it's being multiplied and divided if I wanted to add them or subtract them I have to put stuff in between we've already talked about this thank you for asking sir yes sir No. No, 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 no. You cannot do that, my friend. I don't know. What are you asking? Give me an example. Like, would they give you a negative, like, I say negative y minus 5, I mean negative y with a negative exponent, would they give you something like that? Yeah, why not? And then this will be negative 1 over y to the 6th. Because the negative x is affecting the y. This negative 1 stays up. The negative 6 affects the y. So it would come down, sir. Everything sprang up or was on top of turn negative? I'm sorry? Then that one. No, this negative 1 is coming from this, man. This is a negative 1 times y to the negative 6. So this is going to be negative 1 over y to the 6th. Yeah, but then that saves me on the top of the negative 1. Okay, why don't you give me an example of what you're saying? Negative y. With an exponent of negative 5. Okay. Over neg y, negative 2. Let's not do y because then you got to add, negative come by. Okay, this will be negative x over 2 oh. over y over 5. I mean, x to the second power. Look at me, x over 2. Right, negative x to the second power over y to the fifth. Why does this negative stay there? It is not being affected by that exponent. You got it, my man? Are you with me? All right. Next, what would happen for C? Yeah, Z is going to have to go up, and 3 to the negative 2 is going to have to go down. X to the 1 cancels to 1. So this is going to be Z cubed, or Z to the third power, over over 9 y to the fifth because 3 squared is 9 what would it be my man z squared x cubed over y to the fifth phenomenal thank you son awesome last what would that be sir Okay, this is getting too long. 1 over negative 5 squared. My friends, with all due respect, what is so hard? If you have a negative exponent, bring it down. Why did I bring down? Why did I bring down the negative 5? Because it was inside a parentheses. And everything gets affected that's inside of parentheses. Again, guys, my friends, look. Negative x squared. Only the x is affected. If I go negative x squared, everything is affected and it's x squared. If I have negative 2 squared, that's negative 4. Because only the 2 is getting affected. If I have in parentheses negative 2 squared, it's 4 because everything is getting affected. So I've got negative 2 times negative 2, which equals 4. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, and have a great day.